2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. Let me start from verse 1. Verse 1 to 9. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, a sail of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two sails of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would open windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Are you here, somebody? Now the story starts. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? Remember, the prophet has spoken. Are you here, somebody? There is a prophetic utterance that has gone forth that there will be food. Now, all of a sudden, the four lepers at the gate begin to speak to each other. Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we'll enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we also die. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. Either way, we'll die. Are you here, somebody? Either way, things are not looking good. We will die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. To their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys. And they fled for their lives. Do you know? These people had donkeys. These people had a weapon that at least when they are running away, they should have at least taken the donkeys and then they should be running away. But these people left on foot. Are you here, somebody? They left on foot. Imagine four hungry lepers. These are not four lepers. These are four hungry lepers. Very sick. If there was hunger in the city, imagine how hungry these ones were. Remember, lepers were isolated. They were outside the gate. And people from the city were the ones bringing them food. So at this point, there is completely no food in the city. So how hungry were these four? That's why they said, whatever happens here, we will die. Are you here, somebody? We will die. And the Bible says they began to go to the enemy's camp. They were not going there thinking we will win. No. They were going there thinking, maybe when they look at us, that we are just but four hungry lepers. They might just have mercy and give us some food. But the Bible says, the Lord caused the Syrian army to hear noises. They were hearing a great army. They actually thought Israel had other armies supporting them. Four lepers walking, not with chariots. The Syrians even left their chariots. The Syrians left all their resources, everything that they had was left in their camp, running away from hungry lepers. Are you here, somebody? Running away from hungry lepers. 
And the Bible says, they got to the camp and there was no one. They went in. They began to eat. They took so much. They had so much to take that they could not even finish it. The Bible says, they took, they went and left it somewhere. Went back, collected another spoil. Put it back. Went again, collected until they said, ah, Guys, what we are doing is not good. Let's go and tell the people in the city. Let's go and tell the people in the, in the city. They won a battle without fighting. A prophet had spoken. Are you here, somebody? A prophet had spoken. That by tomorrow, not next month, not next week, by tomorrow, there will be more than enough. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Can I speak over your life, somebody? Can I speak over your life, somebody? By tomorrow. I said by tomorrow. There will be a huge financial breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. By tomorrow. That sickness will not be there. By tomorrow. Your relationship is restored. In the name of Jesus. By tomorrow. You are promoted. I said you are promoted. By tomorrow, that job will appear. In the name of Jesus. By tomorrow, that scholarship is yours. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says a prophet declared. And because a prophet declared, the Lord used four hungry lepers. They didn't have to fight. They did not have to wage war. But the Lord already fought. Are you here somebody? When you get to this level, you have an understanding that this battle is not for me to fight. This one is for the Lord. This battle is not for me to begin to speak back. This one is for the Lord. Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? Don't be someone who is always like, hey, I had, no, I have to confront them. No, I need to confront. No, they must know me. No. It is for the Lord. Let the Lord confront. Let the Lord bring an ambushment. By the time you are involved, you will just be going to carry plunder. Are you here, somebody? You will just be going in the enemy's camp to collect plunder. In the name of Jesus, it is the dimension in the spirit. It is the level in the spirit. And this level is preceded by worship. And a prophetic declaration, a prophetic instruction, a prophetic utterance. Are you here, somebody? A third dimension. This one you need to pay attention because it can confuse you. In this dimension, actually, you will look defeated. Everything will say you are defeated. And yet, that is your victory. Are you with me, somebody? On this third dimension, you are already defeated. And yet, that is your victory. John chapter 19. John chapter 19, verse 30. John 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Are you here, somebody? The Bible says, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said himself, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. His spirit left. Are you here, somebody? His spirit left. You and me. Now, because we read of our Savior, we read at this word and we say he said it is finished. And we translate it that it meant it is now finished. He has completed everything. He has dealt with everything. But I want you to be those who were with him on the cross. I want you to imagine you are those Pharisees. You are the Sadducees. You are the commanders who were putting him on the cross. When he said, it is finished, it was completely gone. Everyone said, I thought he said, 
He is the king of the Jews. I thought he said he is the son of God. How come we killed him today? Are you here, somebody? To everyone, Jesus looked defeated. That is why Peter, because he saw how fierce the battle was, he never even dared to be close by. Everyone left except for John. His, and the women, they were still there. You know, women, we know how to clean. <laughs> we know how to clean. That even when there is no hope, you are still holding on. The women were there. All the disciples gone except for John. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? He himself, he has said, it is finished. Everything was gone. This battle, it looked as though he had completely lost. And yet, this was our victory. This was the victory. Because if he had not reached this level, there would be no resurrection. This was actually the victory. Acts chapter 2, verse 24. Whom God raised up, having lost the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. The Bible says, the same one who gave up his, the spirit, the Bible says the same one was raised. Are you here, somebody? He was lost because it is not possible that he should be held by death. It looked as though it is completely finished. It looked as though there is no hope anymore. And yet, that was the beginning of the miracle. Some of you, you look at your relationship, it is finished. Actually, your marriage, you have already been divorced. Not that your husband is chasing you out. No, you are already divorced. You already signed. The divorce already happened. It is the beginning of the miracle. Are you here, somebody? It is the beginning of the miracle. Some of you, some of you, you've been fired. Not suspended. Fired. Fired. And yet, that is the beginning of your miracle. Are you here, somebody? That is the beginning of your miracle. Everything around you looks as if it is done. When everyone looks what is happening, you are completely done. There is no hope, no redemption. And yet, that is the beginning of miracles. Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50 from verse 18. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day. To save many people alive. Let me get your attention. Do you know that Joseph, the time he was thrown in that pit to be sold as a slave. Do you know he was very young? Do you know that that was something that you cannot even phantom? That was a painful thing. He was finished. They even went back and told the father that he's dead. He's gone. He was finished. He was finished. He went to Potiphar's house. Right there as a slave. It looked as, as though he is on ground zero. As though he is completely defeated. Not only was he a slave there. They even lied. The wife even lied that he tried to rape her. He was thrown into prison. And imagine you are in prison for raping Potiphar's wife. Do you think that is a case that is 10 days? This is not the one for but 10 days, this one. This one is a huge one. This is a very big sentence. He is there with no hope whatsoever. There is completely no hope. 
He was there not thinking, I will become a prime minister. No. He was there thinking, ah, I had a dream. Before I even finished speaking, dad interpreted. I had another dream. My brothers interpreted. And yet here I am. I am in jail in a foreign land as a slave already for a sin I have not even committed. There is no one there. There is no relative. There is no one. There is no one who can say, okay, at least we'll find you a good lawyer. You'll come out. No. There was completely no hope. Little did they know that actually that was his victory. I am saying little did they know that the Lord would cause the king to dream a dream. That would only require Joseph so that he can now be promoted. Are you here, somebody? You will wonder that you got a prophetic word. You are a great woman. You are a great man. Immediately after that prophecy, you lose your work. You were actually a CEO. Are you here, somebody? You lose your job. And you're thinking, ah, ah, but I thought the major prophet told me yesterday that I'm a great woman. How? How then? How do I lose my job? I thought I would be great because I am CEO. So how do I lose this? You are a great man. And your business, including the capital, it perishes. Not just the profits. You know, sometimes you can lose just the profits. But even including the capital, it is all gone. It has perished. You don't even know what to do. You don't have any connection who can give you money. There is completely nothing. You think, now I am done. Mm -mm. You are not done. It is just but the beginning. I said it is just but the beginning. The Bible says, Joseph said, no, don't worry. Don't be like this. You, you meant it for evil. You meant it for evil. But God sent the same situation around for me. And God made it to work for my good. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? God turned around the same situation. And now it has worked for my good. Yes, it looked as though you have finished me. It looked as though there is no hope. But the Lord used the same situation to turn around my life. It is the same situation that the Lord has used to change my story. The same situation, the Lord has used it as a stepping stone. Are you here, somebody? As a stepping stone. Don't worry. You are thinking now everything, everything is finished. I don't even know how I will recover. I don't even know how I will recover. It is just the beginning. Can you hear me? It is just a stepping stone. You are not finished. You are not finished. You are not. It is just a stepping stone. It is just a stepping stone. The best is coming. I said the best is coming. In the name of Jesus. The best is coming. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes the Lord has to cause certain things. The Lord will allow some things to happen. So that at the end, he can bring out something very beautiful. He can bring out something very beautiful. Haven't you read of Job? Who lost everything in one single day? Wasn't he finished? If their wife even said, ah, 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 my husband. This, ah, no, this is now too much. This level, ah, no. The best thing that can happen to you at this point, actually, is to die. Because when he said, when she said, curse God and die, she was actually saying, my husband, you are better off dead than to be like this. You are better off you just dead. Do you think a wife would just say something like that? Does the Bible ever say Job's wife was wicked? No. It means he, she looked at the husband and she was like, no, my husband cannot live this life. This life, it's better off. If he just dies, but this cannot be his life. Imagine a rich man losing everything. Sometimes you cannot phantom it. Sometimes you cannot see it. Because Job was rich from all that to nothing. Completely zero. 
Not even the children. Because at least when the children are there, there is some hope. Not even one was remaining. All of them. In one day. Are you here, somebody? In one day. It looked as if he is completely defeated. You will see the way the friends were speaking. The way the friends were addressing Job. That tells you. Everyone saw that there is no hope completely. Little did they know that God was going to multiply him. I said little did they know that God would multiply him. That is what the Lord can do. Don't think it is finished. Don't think that is the end. No. The Lord is doing something beautiful. The Bible says he will never allow pain without birthing something beautiful. He will never allow pain minus a beautiful thing coming. Then it is not God. Where God is involved, where God is involved, he will give you beauty for ashes. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? He gives you beauty for ashes. He gives you beauty for ashes. He turns sorrow into rejoicing. Are you here, somebody? That is your God. There is a realm in the spirit where it looks as though everything is gone. And yet that is just the beginning of victory. That is your victory. It will look as though everything is scattered. Like you are completely defeated. And yet you have won. Are you here somebody? Yet you have won. When the brothers of Joseph, you know when they threw him in the pit. They thought they have done away with Joseph. Little did they know that they were about to go and bow to the boss Joseph. To the proper boss Joseph. Joseph changed to the extent that his brothers could not recognize him. Are you sure are you? If I see you today and I see you again even after 30 years, do you think I can fail to recognize you? It means this one completely changed. This one changed. Are you here, somebody? This one changed. He completely changed. Daniel chapter 3. Are you ready? From verse 19. Daniel chapter 3. From verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. And the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they hit the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of Vela who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fairy furnace. 21, let's go. Let's go. Read for me. Let's go. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, and their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the frame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fairy finance. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose and hissed and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered. I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hurt. And the form of the fourth one is like the son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fairy furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. 
Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not signed, nor were their garments affected. And the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Sadek, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not save nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language should speak anything amiss against the god of Sadek, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. <laughs> then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Give me from verse 28 message. From verse 28, 29, 30, message. Let's go. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They ignored the king's orders and laid their bodies on the line rather than save or worship any god but their own. Therefore, I issue this decree. Anyone, anywhere, of any race, color, or creed, who says anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, will be ripped to pieces, limb from limb, and their houses torn down. There has never been a God who can pull off a rescue like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Glory to God. The Bible speaks of these three Hebrew boys. And they were thrown in a furnace. Because they did not want to bow to the gods of Nebuchadnezzar. They never said yes to that. And to them, everyone thought, these ones, it is finished. They are now going into the fire. When they were throwing them in the fire, the Bible actually says, the ones who were throwing them in the fire, the ones that carried them there, they were bent. What was the hope for them? There was completely no hope. And yet, in the midst of the fire, when things got so worse, when it was now the worst, the Bible says, in the fire, a fourth man appeared. In the fire, a fourth man appeared. To the extent that the same king who issued an order that they be thrown in the fire. The same king, the same one, not another one. The same king says from today, from today, no one should open their mouth and speak against their God. From today, this one is the God. This one is the real deal, this one. From today, no one should speak against their God. Not only that, they were promoted. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? I told you, some of you, it looks as though everything is finished. And yet it is your way to your promotion. That is your way to your promotion. I was preaching the other day. The scripture when the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Are you here, somebody? First Samuel chapter 30. When everyone 
was not there. They captured all the women. They captured everything, including the kids. The Bible says everyone, including David, they cried until they could cry no more. They cried until it was enough. There was nothing left anymore to be crying. They cried everything until they could cry no more. To the extent that the other men were thinking, let's stone David. And the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Do you know that immediately after that battle, that is the time when David was made king? Do you know that soon after that battle, immediately after they recovered all, the next chapter, David was made king. Are you here, somebody? Sometimes it will look as though everything is gone. And yet, that is your breakthrough. The God that we save, he specializes in turning things that are meant for your evil to work for your good. He makes sure that things that were bringing you shame, he uses the same things and he turns them together to work for your good. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? What the enemy meant for evil in your life. Tonight, the Lord will turn it around. I said we have entered a dimension of victory. Where things that were working against you, where you were already defeated, the Lord begins to work victory. And you come out victorious. In the name of Jesus, you come out victorious. In the name of Jesus, you come out victorious. In the name of Jesus, you think everything is gone. There is completely no hope. But let me tell you something. The Lord will turn it around in the name of Jesus. We have entered a realm. When everything that is, you know, in your life where you think you are completely finished. That is the beginning. I said that is the beginning of the highest victories the highest victories in the name of jesus in the name of jesus